know guys, we've been bringing you uninterrupted content here on Garage 419 for a year and a half now, and we just, we gotta take a break, regroup, and shoot some new material. So, that means today, right here in Sonoma, California, is our season one finale. And I've got a car that is appropriate for a finale right here. 500 horsepower, rear wheel drive, front engine, stick shift, car that can go 175 miles an hour and do the nastiest burnouts you've ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, 2010 Shelby GT500. In this episode, I'm going to take this car on some of the most beautiful roads this country has to offer and beat the crap out of it on the racetrack. All for your viewing pleasure. I know, it's a tough life. I'm Matt Farah. You're watching Garage 419. at in the new 2010 GT500 where I say that was a good call. For instance, whoever thought to put a four inch exhaust on this thing, that was a good call because it howls. Whoever thought to put a super short throw shifter in it that's real quick on the one two shift, so quick in fact that I can't help but light the tires up every time I shift. That was a good call. Whoever put Alcantara on the seats, that was a good call. Whoever looked at the last generation GT500's wheels and said, those are lame, make me something better. The guy who did, that was a good call. And then someone said, let's yank out that old clutch and put in one that's 35 millimeters bigger yet has a softer pedal effort. Very good call. And then someone said, let's put in a three-way stability control mode so that when the weather gets bad, I can leave it on. If I want to have some fun on a windy road, I can turn it off. And when it's time to make the donuts, all the way off, and I say, good fucking call. So, with the new model, they've taken a lot of the gripes and things they've heard from the outgoing model and they've updated them. We've got a 540 horsepower V8, supercharged of course, basically the same power plant from the KR. We've got revised aerodynamics that actually add downforce at the front and take downforce away from the rear, which is sort of sounds counterintuitive, but it actually makes it easier to dance the car around corners because it's more balanced. The old car tended to understeer like crazy. And with this car, they've made a few changes that really let you know that you're driving a Shelby. There's Alcantara inserts in the seats to keep you in place during cornering. There's stitching in the front and back seats that match the stripe color on your car. There's thumb and cutouts on the steering wheel to make sure your hands get the right grip on the racetrack. And there's a cue ball shifter, which is actually made by a company that makes cue balls. I could go on about the back seats and the trunk space and all those sorts of things, but you don't really care about that. So I'll talk about things that are more important, like the weight. It's interesting what happens with this car because the suspension's good, the engine's good, the power's good, the brakes are good, but when you're going real hard into a corner, the car does feel every bit of its 3,900 pounds. 
not exactly a lightweight. On the other hand, there's a giant supercharged V8 up front, and that explains a lot of things. Right about now, we're not just in this great car driving these great roads. No, no, no. That would be way too easy. A regular episode, maybe, but certainly not for the season finale. Now, we're on our way to Infineon Raceway, where we will absolutely beat the ever-loving snot out of this car on the racetrack. There's going to be burnouts. There's going to be donuts. There's going to be road course. There's going to be a drag strip. It is going to be fun. You guys better stick around because season finale of Garage 419 and we're going out in a big, big way. Wouldn't be a Mustang event without a drag strip. And we're here at Infineon Drag Strip. We've got a media challenge $10 race. Spinelli representing Fastlane Daily today. Yeah, Wes right. Seiler representing Jalopnik.com. Have you ever been on a drag strip before? Never, never before. I'm a road course guy. So. Road course guy. That's yeah. the excuse I always get. <laughs> I grew up on the drag strip, but I'll probably suck today. We'll see what happens. He got squirrely here. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's a good car, yeah. I don't care if what it Oh, Spinelli, you suck. by the wind noise coming through the microphone, uh, we're actually battling about a 25 mile an hour headwind here on this drag strip, which will greatly affect your uh, your times. And so far, my best time is a 12.9, which is not all that impressive in the grand scheme of things. Apparently someone ran a 12.6 earlier today, but it's faster than my group, and certainly faster than Spinelli or Wes by a wide margin. Yeah. The results are in. The Garage 419 $10 bet. The drag strip. Spinelli, your time, please. Um, a, the, a fairly pathetic 13.7. Okay, Siler? 13.7 Siler was 13.7. Two 13.7s, and of course yours truly, okay. 12.9 at 110 miles an hour. Now, none of those times are particularly good considering the capabilities of this car, am I right? right? Well, I mean, you know, we've got a, a, like a 20 mile an hour headwind. Yeah, and the track's pretty slick. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to light them up in third gear. And we, and we did three runs, so. Yeah. We also did, yeah, just yeah. three runs. Not exactly. All, all we've proven is that Matt's better than we are. Yeah, you know, well, a better right. human being. We, we sort of knew that. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's faster it's with traction control on. We learned that. Yes, it is faster and, with traction control And Andy, on. the pro driver, has said he has run a 12.3 yeah. in this car at 115 in the right weather conditions, which is believable. I, yeah, I buy totally. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Car, this car feels a lot faster than the numbers are showing. Oh, yeah, and, and, and I didn't mention that we actually did the the 13.7 in 300 miles an hour, which is, <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but we, we totally, we totally nailed that. So now we, we gotta go drive on the road course. Yeah, we gotta do the road course. Fine. Road course, yeah, let's yeah. go. All right, we're on the Infineon road course right now, and the goal is to solve the question, can a Mustang go around corners? So, we're gonna do a lap, and we will find out. Starting on the front straightaway, just hammer it out there. 80 miles an hour into the first bend, uphill left-hander, and the suspension compresses when you get uphill, giving you a lot more grip in this right-hand turn. Hard on the brakes into second, tight right-hander, just back on power, and the car, you can steer with the throttle, which I like in the front engine rear drive cars. You can really get that steering in with the throttle, and your inputs 
can dance it around the corners. Oh, nice. You can get understeer or oversteer or balance it in between depending on what you want to do, which I like. Some of the, you know, all-wheel drive, computer-controlled paddle shift and stuff, it doesn't do that. It sticks all the time. I don't really see the fun in that. I like a car to be able to dance and kind of kind of have a fun, have a good time sliding around the track a bit. I hit that apex much better that time. Down into the S's. High-speed sweepers, which is where this car is really at home. 3,900 pounds is a bit too heavy for the tight corners. There we go, a little counter steer. A little sliding around going on, no problem. And you can just dance it. I love the fast sweepers in this car. That's where it's really, really, really nice. Alcantara steering wheel gives you some great grip. And you're clenching your fists around it. Into the back straight away. So, one lap of the track down. Can the Mustang go around corners? I think the answer is yes. Yes, it will go around corners, and yes, you can have a lot of fun doing it. Good lap, good lap. Well guys, that concludes this episode and this season of Garage 419. We've learned that the 2010 GT500 goes fast in a straight line as I ripped a 12.9 quarter mile, goes faster on the racetrack in the fast sweepers, and I can attempt to do figure eights, but I look really sloppy doing it. It's also a great car to live with on a daily basis. It gets the Farrah stamp approval. I love it. And now I'm out of here. Uh, I'm gonna go back to New York and get some sleep. I'll see you guys later. Wait, you guys, you guys didn't think I was gonna leave without laying down some 11s, did you? Now, now it's time we put the GT500 to the ultimate test as a way to say thank you to all you guys. I give to you a burnout. Thank <laughs> you.